Excellent. Uh, Senator Manigan. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. The Minerals Resource Rent Tax Repeal and Other Measures Bill will remove what most Australians know to be the mining tax. What most Australians didn't realise at the election, however, was that the low income super contributions and the superannuation guarantee would also be on the chopping block. I, for one, support the government's intention to bring the budget back into the black. But what I don't support is penalising hard-working, low-paid Australians through these changes to their super. It's one thing to ask people to work for welfare. It's another to rip what little potential retirement savings they will have away from them. Madam Acting Deputy President, it's for this reason that I again ask the Chamber to consider supporting my amendments. By opposing Schedule 6, we are allowing many low-income earners to save up to a further $20,000 in today's terms in their superannuation, with the average being between five and 15000 for low-income earners. This has been forecast by Industry Super Australia to benefit some 3.4 million low-income earners. By opposing Schedule 7, the Chamber would be telling about 35 per cent of working Australians that they don't need to pay more tax on their super than they do on their income. Industry Super Australia puts it clearly in stating that the low income super contribution operates as a tax offset, effectively refunding the contribution tax paid by low income earners on their superannuation guarantee and other concessional contributions up to $500 per annum, thus allowing low-income earners to accrue a tax concession on their contributions like all other income earners. By repealing Schedule 7 of the bill, the Chamber would be allowing low-income earners to save up to $27,000 in today's terms when they access their super when they retire. If Schedule 7 is not repealed, one in three working Australians will be left without any tax concessions from the government, despite having their super locked away until retirement. These are the working Australians who need concessions the most. I think it is important for the Chamber and the government in particular to realise that there was no pre-election commitment to remove the low income tax benefit by the coalition and therefore I ask the government to reconsider its motives. Finally, Madam Acting Deputy President, the government should allow some respite for low income earners when it comes to super. After all, increased super balances now will decrease the pressure on the taxpayer funded age pension in the future. Madam Acting De Deputy President, now I'd like to talk about the other amendments before the Chamber. Over recent days, I've been contemplating how I'd vote on the various amendments put forward by other senators. I couldn't be at, help to be at pains to think what was the right thing to do. I was thinking about the budget. I was thinking about how savings needed to be made. I was thinking about how future generations shouldn't have to pick up the bill for the government's poor management. But I was also thinking of Phil and Tanya in West Melbourne, Madam Acting Deputy President, a couple I've spoken about on numerous occasions, a couple who worked bloody hard to provide for the needs of their three children, a couple who couldn't afford grommets for their son's ears for 18 months until they could find a doctor who would bulk bill. And I realised if the government could put a little bit of thought into their policy, not so much money would be wasted. School kids' bonuses for people on $240,000 a year, is that necessary? Of course not. School kids' bonuses for people on $50,000 a year, is that necessary? Absolutely. I can't vote against people earning $240,000 receiving the school kids' bonus. If I could, I would. But what I will support is those earning $50,000 receiving it. 
Madam Acting Deputy President, I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to be fair to the government, but first and foremost, I'm trying to be fair to the people I represent, the people of Victoria, especially those who are battling. How about we start to get real? How about we start stop kicking those who are down? How about the government tailor their policy a little more carefully and recognise a one-size-fits-all approach isn't right? After all, we still have enough money to be receiving here in this place above average super payments. If the government wants ideas on where to find money, here are a couple for consideration. Remove negative gearing for investment in established properties. Form a Commonwealth Development Bank. Bring back the clean energy income tax rates and other amendments bill that blew a $2 billion hole in the budget. Increase the deficit levy by 1 per cent. That will raise $1.2 billion alone. Review the value of MBS item numbers. After all, costs change. Require the government to give preference to Australian-made product. It will support industry and keep Australians in a job. That means more tax and less welfare. What more could you want? Madam Acting Deputy President, these are just a couple of ideas that just came to mind. But with all the great minds in the government, surely they can come up with a better, fairer budget. But if not, I'm happy to help. I'll make sure they know what I think of the budget measures, what's fair and what's not. I won't horse trade, but I won't bludgeon either. But you can't make strawberry jam out of effluent. The government needs to be fair in their proposals and put a little more thought into what they are actually asking of people who are finding it the hardest. Thank you, Senator.